welcome back to the channel and um you know i'm glad to be here hopefully you guys are glad to be here too so <clears throat> if you know me you know i love fitness right so from this channel i want you to know that i love fitness i take fitness extremely serious you know i work out consistently um i moderate what i eat as well very consistently too and you know i want this channel to show my fitness but i also love finance you know so i love um taking you know my finances into my own hands basically uh i love investing i love commodities you know i love cryptocurrency i just love learning about finance i love learning about business as well because your finances is an important aspect of your life you know having money and being financially responsible it is extremely important in the life that we live so you want to be able to have some financial literacy and be someone who can take care of their finances so you can be a you know successful person a successful human being you can be a responsible person and then also kind of lead your people in a responsible way whether that whether that mean you have a family a wife children a girlfriend etc right you want to be a responsible person uh, in your life. And another, and a good way to start with your responsibility is to get your finance in check, right? So in this video, we're, so basically I just want you guys to know that in this, in this YouTube, right? This YouTube of mine here that you guys are watching, I am going to incorporate finance. And in this video, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about finance. I'm also going to have my gym videos as well, because that is also a part of my life. I can be multi- uh, talented, multi-skilled, multi-anything, you know what I'm saying? So basically, um, you can tell from this title of this video that what we're, we're what we're going to discuss is how uh, the banks manipulate us, right? How the banks manipulate people and basically how the, you should want to work on being your own bank, right? And taking, again, your finance into your own control, right? So let's start with, you know, basically what I mean by how a bank man manipulates individuals and, you know, why I feel like a lot of people the overlook see these things uh, just because, you know, when they think of a bank, they think about a, a bank as something that's, you know, it's, it's federal, you know, they have a federal backing, they have certain guidelines and things like that, and it's regulated which is true. It is regulated, right? And it's, it's backed by the government. If you lose uh, some money or you get scammed, they, you have to go through a process. They give you your money back, all these good stuff, right? So I do see the importance of a bank. I'm not saying banks are not important, but I'm saying that they manipulate people and people don't even know that they're being manipulated, right? So as a bank, right? So if you um, are, are putting your, your your savings to a bank, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? But you have to know what you're saving for, right? So when it comes to a bank and its manipulation tactics, we look at the bank as a place to put all of your money into, right? That's what they get you with. You got to put all your savings into a bank and et cetera, et cetera. You get your direct deposit and all that stuff. Fine, right? But a bank is only required to keep a 10% minimum as their reserve. So whenever you put in like a thousand dollars, I think they only they can only keep 10% of that. Just know that if you put a thousand dollars in, they're only required to actually have 10% of that at that actual bank, right? So what are they doing with the other 90% of your money that you're putting in there, right? They are loaning uh, your money out to other individuals. They are using that money to invest into different markets and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right. So, what the bank does and what they do to basically manipulate others and like you're looked at as a prey. They prey on you, right? So the the banks prey on on people. The average uh, day job. So the banks are loaning out ninety percent of your income that you put in there to other people, right? To other people who are taking out whatever type of loans. And guess what? They can make up whatever interest rate they, that they have on those loans. It can be 7%. It can be 12%. It can be 13, 15 based upon credit and, and history and uh, your income and job stability, all of this jargon, right? So they're getting 12% and even more in some cases 
off of the money that you put, 90% of your money you put into the bank, they are getting 12% of that uh, in, in interest and then making the money that you put back, right? So they're getting the money that you put, making that back, and then also getting 12% interest on that money as well. And guess what? What do they give to you, the person who's putting their money that they work so hard for, 40 hours minimum, 40 hours a week for, into, uh, uh, the, and you put it into the bank, what are you getting in return for them loaning out 90% of your money only having 10% on hand, right? You're getting 0.001% on your interest on some of these checkings account, some of these savings account, and, and all of these, uh, uh, you know, like you have these online accounts as well, and maybe they can give you uh, 1% on some of these online accounts, right? And yeah, you can have some high yield ch uh, checking accounts or savings accounts that give you like what, 0 0.6, or some may even give you 0 0.8, right? But in a grand scheme of things, and they're loaning your, your, your money out for 12% upwards and only giving you back the most bare minimum that's not even cracking 1% interest rate a year, right? So that is, that is a, that is a predator, right? And you are the prey. So, but I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with putting your money into a bank and, and, and leveraging them for, you know, for a certain reason, right? But I just want you to know that this is what they're doing. And this is why you should also try to gain interest on your savings, on your cash. You should think of yourself as a bank as well, because you're think of by the government as, as, as money, your money, you're the GDP, your money, you produce, you work, you do this, you do that, you spend into the, into the, uh, uh, into society, your cash goes everywhere, right? They can't, you know, so you got to understand to be your own bank, right? And only leverage parts of the things that you need to leverage and not, uh, act like this is the this like like you have to put your entire income into a bank for savings, right? So, what what have we learned from this discussion? Right, is that they are for ninety percent of your income, the banks are loaning your income out, or they're investing into the stock market, right? They're putting your money up as investments, or they're putting your money up as bonds, or maybe even putting some of your money into crypto. It doesn't matter. Whatever they're doing, they are trying to get a return. So from your money, you should be uh, trying to figure out how you can get a return on your cash as well, right? So what I like to do is I leverage the bank, of course, and I always want to get something that is a little bit higher in terms of yield for my money that I worked hard for, right? So I leverage the bank by putting an amount, you know, that for for like a, a you know, for um, like, like a net for safety reasons, you know? So I put like a certain amount. They're like, okay, if anything happens that um, I can kind of live off of this, right, without touching my stocks for like maybe like a year period, right? So I put like about a, a year's worth of savings into the bank, right? Something that I'm not, I don't really touch. I'm not really going to touch. It's just there. And what I look for is a bank that has high yield, right? So of course I know they're loaning out 90% um, of my money, which is okay because, I mean, for the most part, the amount that I think that uh, I can use for a year isn't something that's totally like, I mean, if I end up losing it, yeah, it'll be, you know, situation or if there's a bank run and I can't get my money out of the bank, you know, maybe through some kind of situations going on here. Uh, maybe there's some type of situations going on with the bank. Yeah, it may cause a problem, but that's I'm not looking to exceed the my yearly what I believe is my, is like if I, you know, if anything hits the fan, my my maybe six to a, a, a year's worth of reserve. Right. So after that, you know. Everything else pretty much goes into investments. So I'm talking about stocks, right? I'm talking about, sorry, I'm talking about cryptocurrency, and I'm, um, and I'm even talking about commodities as well. So for a good portion, right? So whenever you 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 earn your money, right? Whenever you get paid, you want to take, you want to start paying yourself first. That's the number one thing that you want to do, right? You don't want to. Yes, of course, your bills are important. The debt you have to pay is important and you should definitely pay that. I'm not saying don't pay. Actually, paying debt is a big way to being financial literate. And it's actually really good. It's comforting when you start paying off your debt because then in your mind is not in your mind anymore of a consistent payment. And you finally have it gone. You feel so relieved. But what I'm saying is that when you get your money, you should you should 
know what your expenses are already, right? For the most part, for that month. So you should know that this is what you got to pay for your credit card bill. This is what you got to pay for your car insurance. This is what you got to pay for your, your phone bill. This is what you got to pay for your, your living. This is, what you, this is like for the, like you want to get your expenses dialed into a point where you know this is what it's the ballpark around, right? And yeah, they may be like, it may give or take, it may be less some month. It may be more some month, but this is the ballpark of my expenses, right? So that's why you know when you get that direct deposit that, okay, what you can take out for your, you know, uh, for your um, investments, right? So you want to take out a portion, you know, whatever that may be to you, right? And take out that portion, whether that be 500 out of a paycheck, whatever that you can afford to do a thousand out of a paycheck, whatever you can afford to do 2000 out of a paycheck or even more, and then put that into some investments, right? So investments as in index funds, as in um, um, uh, ETFs, any, you know, uh, not any stock, of course, you know, I, I will never say any stock, but any stock that you've done your research on and you feel like this is where you want to park a majority of your money into, that is up to you to do the research on and see this is a company that you would like to put your money into, whether that be a dividend uh, performing uh, dividend uh, type of stock or a growth stock. It is always up to you as a person because this is your money. This is what you have to do to prepare yourself to be a financial literate person, to be a responsible person with your finances. One thing I also want to say to you all is money comes and money goes, right? So you don't want to be stuck on the fact on your money so much. Money comes, money goes, but time is what goes and it never comes, you know? So just know that there's going to be ups and downs when it comes to your finances. There's always going to be ups and there's always going to be downs, right? But you want to do the best that you can possibly do because nothing in this world is actually secure. There's nothing that's secure. Everything has a market and everything fluctuates, guys. So you want to just do what you can possibly do to your own realm of due diligence and then everything else, just give it to God, you know? Give it to God. Have peace with, with your finances to a certain degree, but also definitely be hungry. Be ready to get to go out and produce more and do more for yourself and for your family, right? So um, you want to do an index fund, you want to do an ETF. I actually prefer doing index funds and ETFs because they're a collection of stocks and um, what they are is they're not actively managed. So their expenses are really low and because they're not actively managed, they follow the market to a certain degree and it's easy for those uh, the stocks are within it to get dropped or to, you know, for uh, if they're doing well for them to add more and things like that. So you're always getting the best pick of what's going of the stocks that are in our U.S. economy. And again, when you're buying into stocks, you're buying into a company, right? That's producing, that is hiring and that is doing a lot of things that you may not even know of. Right. So it's not just the stock you're buying into the actual company and you're also getting uh, their growth. And if you're looking for dividends, which I suggest you do, because guess what the bank is doing? The bank is getting interest off your money. So what do you want to do with your money? You want to get interest off your money and not just look for growth. So you want to then put your money into dividend stocks or you can even like, that's why I like, again, index funds and ETF because most index funds and most ETFs, they do pay a dividend, right? So, one, uh, so a couple that I do, like I can give you guys some is the VU, right? I like VU. I like VTI. Uh, VU is S&P 500 and mirrors S&P 500. It's a really good one. Um, and they pay dividends as well. You can just park some money into there, get your, like, well, I think it's like 2% dividend, which is, it's not the greatest, but at least it's higher than most banks. And also if you're, you're pretty much betting on the U.S. economy, um, to continuously go up. And if you look at the VU, uh, for its max chart, you can see that it's had, it's, it's pretty much gone up in its entire history, right? So the VU is a place you can park your money. VTI, the total stock market as well. QQQ is one of my favorites for tech. I love QQQ. Um, and, uh, SMH, uh, for, for chips and things like that. So there's just so many places that you can park your money into and, um, definitely, Put, you know, start looking into putting your money into investments, right? Another thing is cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, um, you don't want to put all your money into cryptocurrency, but you want to do your research and see the cryptocurrencies that do give you a yield, right? So there's some that do, right? Like Solana, like Cardano, and even, um, um, what's the other one? Um, I forgot it. I forgot it now, but 
There's a Solana Cardano that give you like 4% yield on the money that you're putting in and they give you uh, 2% for Cardano. And that's a good way to use them to leverage and to gain interest so that it's like you're being the bank of your own money now. Yes, cryptocurrency is volatile. So only invest with what you can afford, right? So only put in like 10% of your entire um, monthly income, right? Only 10%, maybe 5%. It just depends on how you feel and just do that. So you can also have a, a little hedge against the stock market and against any other situation. Uh, let's say the crypto market does really well. You can have that to, to subsidize any losses in the stock market. And um, yeah, you guys can learn all this on YouTube. I'll definitely talk about all of this, all of this more and have more informational videos, but I didn't want it, this video to be that long. So just think of yourself as a bank and do what the banks do, right? So they, they again what do banks do they take the only required to keep 10 percent of your money for liquidity purposes just in case you know there's a uh, uh, just like if there's a bank run or whatever even if there's a bank run you're not most likely even able to even get the money that you put in out because they're going to close up shop because they don't have the money that they say they have so that's why banks aren't truly safe anyway um why did i put quotes on safe but yeah banks are not truly safe anyway because then they don't have the money that they say they have at the actual physical location so if you try to go to your bank to get out like twenty thousand dollars you're not well you may be able to but if there's a situation in the economy where everyone is trying to get out their money from a bank trust me they're going to close that bank down you're not going to be able to get your money i'm telling you that 100 percent. and you can look it up it's called a bank run so nothing is truly secure guys but you can definitely leverage your time more effectively, your finances more effectively to where you can earn interest, earn a yield, and then invest into the economy for growth. And then, you know, be able to use it to subsidize your lifestyle um, once it gets to a certain point where you can take out some of that that earned money. Not, not what you put in, but like some of the earned money to then use that to buy whatever you want to do. Uh, and, and do whatever you pretty much want to do, right? So you guys should be a bank for yourself. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I rambled a lot, but this gets me really excited. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, okay? Thank you. And leave a message, comment, like this video, subscribe. I definitely will be doing uh, uh, more finance stuff and as well as fitness. Um, you guys know how it is. That's Those are my two favorite things to do. Um, I appreciate you guys. And you know, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone, tell them to come to my channel. You know, we having great discussions over here and everything and peace out.